So, better late than never, we have the monthly report for July. Kicking it off with CIG and LA, their engineering department say they have been helping stabilize 2.5 plus working away on the new item system. All elements of the ships fall under this as well, so it's a big job, but I'm very excited for this item system. They're also hard at work on the atmospheric flight. Tech design is also working on atmospheric flight, but they're also ironing out the salvage design further to be ready for code and implementation. This is the smaller version of the salvage mechanic, not the one with the big reclaimer. It's one where you can use a handheld device and find the best materials from uh, a salvageable ship. On the art department, they are working on the marine suits, getting them into a playable state. You said the Caterpillar is also close to being finished on the art side. In narrative, Squadron 42 shoot is over. It is now 1,255 pages of script. And this includes things like wild lines and battle chatter, etc. Just to sort of give that more immersive feeling. They're also recording some sample lines for the Persistent Universe as well. In QA, the focus is on the new skeleton and recent animation changes. They're testing the item 2.0 and testing early builds of the Dragonfly and Atmospheric Flight. Hopefully we'll see more of the Atmospheric Flight at Gamescom. So CIG and Austin in the development side, they are establishing various aspects of the landing zones and points of interest. I believe points of interest will just be different things around the planets that are worth checking out. They're also setting up the new 2.0 elevators to work in Grimhex and also furthering the design for the kiosk shopping. So art and animation, they are iterating on feedback on the final lighting pass for Grimhex and Levski. And I must say the new lighting in 2.5 is one of the best features I have seen. It is just, it just gives it more of a realistic look. They're also wrapped up the final art pass on the Hornet F7A, which we saw earlier on. Very, very cool. We saw that in this week's Star Citizen Sunday. They're now revamping the Connie variants to the Andromeda level. Currently, as Chris Smith mentioned, it's the Aquila or the Aquila. That will be finished in the next two weeks. Hopefully, we'll see some more of that at Gamescom as well. I'd love to be able to walk around the Aquila. They're also trucking along with the Drake Herald working on the cockpit at the moment. They're knocking out animation requirements for the Dragonfly. They've wrapped up the Anvil Hornet and Super Hornet combat speed, enter and exit. Now they're on to the M50 and the Gladius. They're polishing NPC animations for Subsumption System. And finally, drafting up documentation for a service beacon. This is your new Moby Glass feature, which we heard from Tony Zurevek a while ago, in which you can request assistance from other players and offer goods and services to players and NPCs alike. So, that is going to be a cool feature. In IT and operations, progress has been made on reducing the patch size, which is very important when we're trying to download it, and prepping for Gamescom. So, Foundry 42 in the UK, in the engineering, they are heavily worked on subsumption, Really helps with mission systems greatly. It allows them to get so many more missions out much quicker. They've almost finished moving the old AI system into Subsumption as well. They're starting to see the progress now, which is excellent news. Again, things like Subsumption, these are the back-end systems that are very, very important. But the reason why we haven't been seeing a lot of content recently is because things like this are needing to take priority. Once they're in, things will fly out much quicker. So on the outside, they have put a system in place to allow ship weapon artists to improve production and get more weapons out to us. They have given some love to the Claws and Werner ATT4 and the Sniper Rifle. They're just working up the family, keeping it consistent and usable for Squadron 42. So the VFX, they've got the flight ready VFX for the Argo, the thrusters and the damage, etc. Continued work on the Grimhex environment effects. They're taking full advantage of the new tiled lighting model plus weapon impact effects improvements. They have discussed visual effects support for procedural planets, including clouds, weather, water, atmospheric entry and exit. Just to name a few, they're tidying up some existing ship thruster effects, optic effects and bloom for 2.5 and creating some lovely boost effects. And yes, the uh, the bloom may be a little over, over tweaked, but it does look very nice. So environmental art, they're polishing what they will show off at Gamescom. A small hit team has returned from Frankfurt who are focused on the procedural tech to push the feature along big for creating Star Citizen's environments. In animations, they are tackling all animations for weapon reloads for all positions. In vehicle art for the Idris, they are knocking out the captain's quarters and mirroring the other side of the ship, which are stairways, hallways, and corridors. Next month, they say the intent is to have the interior rooms on the Idris complete to final art with collision and allow for a full playthrough, which is amazing. The progress they've made on that is crazy. Lots of cleanup on the Javelin as well. They're just finishing off the junction rooms. Great progress on the Bengal as well. They are wrapping up the exterior hull. Completed with Gatling gun, AA turrets and exterior bridge. And 
We heard the other week that the Bengal has 90 turrets. Interior-wise, they are wrapping up the final touches of the main hangar. The interior bridge is close to coming to com completion. They're now starting the ready room and the bunk room. So I assume the ready room is where you would get your kit on, ready to be deployed. In designs, they are hammering away at Squadron 42 levels, which are really coming together, they say. Can't wait to see that. Well, play it, should I say. I'm not sure if they're going to show us it. Implementation of all the recorded performance capture dialogue is well underway. They're making good progress on the required costumes list. In props, they have continued on the ship items. They now have over 100 complete items. Next, they're looking at ship interiors and how sub-items integrate into them. So if you don't know components, we'll have sub-components that can be swapped out and changed and repaired. Very in-depth. In graphics, they've finally made the sun into an actual object you can fly around. I wouldn't get too close, mind. But the CryEngine sun is generally about 10 kilometers away in a specific location, no matter where you are. Now it's actually a hot, glowing sphere that casts light and shadows in all directions. It has a physically accurate reflection, which grows as you get closer. Very cool. They've also begun asteroid tech to place asteroids and planetary rings consisting of millions of asteroids. It's going to be a lot of mining out there. They've also improved the specular reflections to give a more accurate reflection from light. Plus, it's cheaper, so I'm guessing they mean it requires less memory and less horsepower. In audio, they have further tidied up the, the, the VoIP that they're working on, and I'm really looking forward to their VoIP. They're also improving the Dragonfly audio, plus the address which took most of its time, and we saw that in ATV. They're continuing the audio on Grimhex, including the elevators and doors, improving the FPS module audio too, which I assume will be Star Marine. They're coordinating with Pedro Camacho, who is the composer for all Star Citizen music, and an amazingly talented guy. Getting it integrated with the music logic system, so I assume as you traverse from happy times to uh, combat and dangerous parts of the game, it'll, the, the music will change. They're also prototyping the new UI ship sound design language to get all ship manufacturers consistent and working on new audio controls for atmospheric wind and turbulence. And I really hope that they do that well. I'm sure they will. So when we're transitioning from well, going into atmospherics, you'll start hearing things rattle and you'll tell that you're actually in atmosphere compared to being in the silence of space so foundry 42 frankfurt they have added two new people to the planetary tech team one working on oceans and effects and the other on planet ed which is the planetary ecosystem the next steps are to improve the visuals uh, even more making the planets more and more interactive with landing zones and ecosystems this includes rendering massive objects prototyping the different planet types of for the universe putting more of the planets into the control of the artists to make them really interesting and engaging with deep history. They're also working on the local physics grid and planetary grid system, stabilizing the vision for the first person. They've developed several techniques to simulate how the human eye stabilizes an image, so there's not going to be less head bob. There'll be lots of tweaks, they say, in the upcoming months for this, so it's not finalized just yet. So in design, they've started work on the new AI crew skills and stats system, as we heard from Tony Zurovec. This governs how good your NPCs are at specific jobs, plus how players can improve their AI crew. And again, we've heard about this in the latest Star, uh, Star Citizen Sunday, so do check that out. No two AI should be the same. Some will be better at shooting, some at tactics, some with maybe working with a special weapon. Others may just be better as an engineer or a tactical officer. There's so many different variations. The idea is to get the players to choose their crew carefully, train them to improve specific qualities, and then take care of them. They're also pushing hard to get the friends contact list, groups and organisations implemented. Lots of work into doors, airlocks, elevators, making sure that they're all integrated with the uh, with the other systems that are, that are in the station and or, or on, on ships like security, docking and customs and so on and so forth. A door, they say, can just be a door, but if you add a security terminal, this will control the access to allow only the people with the exact security clearance to pass through it, which is very important on big ships. Levski is progressing nicely, they say they have added roads and access points to the exterior. Visitors can now reach the location both from space and along the surface, that's interesting. R&D as well regarding modularity and location components. They can now build anything from satellites to planetary outposts while maintaining the quality, the realism and the visual standards. So in weapons, last month they finished off the bearing P8SC SMG, as we've seen that in uh, ATV. I'll try and get a picture of that. Plus, they've polished up some other weapons. They've also updated the Devastator shotgun to be more consistent with the manufacturer. They're blocking out modular missile racks to bring missiles to sensible sizes and aid with balance and provide players with more options for what they can equip to their ships. In AI, they now have version 0.962i 
for the subsumption editor. Much more stable and usable. The new mission system has received a lot of attention. This allows them to create huge amounts of missions for Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. Plus improve the way that NPCs can interact with multi-usable objects. So behaviour in engineering. They have been bug fixing things like purchasing errors. Weapon attachments not given to the player. So hopefully 2.5 will bring the weapon attachments like sights and scopes. Well... Not new ones, just the ones that they should have to start with. Plus, server client crashes after purchasing, etc. In design, they have spent most of the time on Grimhex finishing and polishing. In art, they have spent a lot of time with Grimhex as well, ensuring it reflects the passage of time from its dwellers. And in Turbulent, to finish off with, they've continued work on the communication platform. The target is to show off Phase 1 at CitizenCon. And finally, the same for showing off the new game launcher. The UI will look the same, but the new game launcher will be much better. Anyway, that was Monthly Report. Do let me know your thoughts. Some really cool stuff there. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram. And I shall see you next time. with me that's the one hundred and fifty viewers guys honestly this is the most I've had thank you all for uh, for watching this evening so we're now in the uh, the transport troop transport variant because it would have cost too much to uh, to have paid to get that off <laughs> never mind it happens Trials and tribulations of being... Uh...